Hey, what's up? Jason here. Today, we're going to talk about money in game development. And specifically, I'm going to share with you how much money my first game development job paid and my second game development job. So you can kind of see what that progression is like, what it was like taking that offer and making the move to actually accept the job and the whole cost around it. And I guess some of the extra benefits and bonuses and things that you might not think about when accepting or taking your first game development job. So if you're interested in game development or you're maybe already a game developer and just kind of hanging out and curious what it was like for other people, make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe, or just go share this video. And also, if you have any questions about just getting started in game development or something similar, drop them down below. I'd be kind of curious to see what else people are wondering about and maybe I'll do a follow-up video on that. All right, so let's get started with I guess the first job, what it was and how much it paid, and then I'll go into a little bit more detail. So my first game development job was actually in the QA department, working on a game called Vanguard Saga of Heroes. It's a big MMORPG, and I got onto that team right as the game was kind of launching. So I started off in the QA department with no real game development experience, but a tiny bit of QA experience outside of the game development industry. I'll talk about that in a moment and how that kind of translated. But before we get on to the video, I just wanted to let you know that right now I'm having a big sale on my game development courses. I've bundled everything together into the full path bundle, which means that now you can get all of my courses for the price of just one. The full path bundle will take you all the way from never having looked at code before to have the tools to work at a game studio successfully or create a small to medium sized game all on your own. You'll have direct access to me while you're doing the coursework, so you won't get stuck. So click the link in the description below and grab the discount to get started on your game development journey. So what did this QA job actually pay? Well, when I started interviewing, it sounded like the pay was going to be about $24,000, and that's US. But by the time I finished the interview process and got the actual offer, it was $32,000, which was pretty helpful because at the time I had a wife and two young kids now up to five. And kids can be expensive, especially in Southern California where this job was right by the ocean in a really kind of expensive area. And that's something to watch out for when you're applying for game development jobs. Look at the area that they're in because some pay may seem great in one area and totally terrible in the other area. Now for QA jobs, there's probably not going to be a whole lot of variance, but the variance gets a lot bigger as you go up in your career. So programmer jobs, they pay a lot more if they're you know, on the coasts or in one of these big tech cities than if they're somewhere else. Luckily though, with things going remote lately, that's kind of changing and I've found that you can get really good paying game development jobs from just about anywhere and almost half of the companies seem to now be completely open to just hiring remote workers, which is I think a great thing for everybody, at least financially. So let's talk about the move into this new job. What was that like and taking 32,000 with two kids and having to move 1,500 miles or 2,000 miles, somewhere around that, I forget the exact distance. Having to do all that and doing it at $32,000, what was that like? Well, it was certainly, I would say rough, but more than worth it. So when I started this job out, my paychecks were coming in at probably around 3,000, 3,200 a month. I wish I had an old stub to just look at it, but I'd take home probably about 3,200 a month. Uh, you know, that's after all of the taxes and the medical that was getting taken out of there. It might have been a couple hundred dollars less than that. I can't remember exactly. And I, again, wish I had a pay stub so I could just pull it up and flash it on the screen here. But it was right around there. And then my costs were still kind of high because when I first took the job, my wife and two kids were still living in Washington. I had to move down here and figure out where it was we were going to live. So we we're paying for rent up in Washington and then it was paying for rent and some utilities as well down here in California. Luckily, I was able to move in with another person on the QA team. And I think that that was really, really helpful and kind of mandatory for this to really be possible for me. I got to move in with him and stayed with him at least until I kind of got started, or at least until I thought I was getting started. But then only a couple weeks into this job, there was a big, big shakeup. And I've shared a little bit about this story before, but I'll give you just a real quick rundown. Essentially what happened is before I got hired at this job, the company was already in negotiations to be bought out by Sony. So Sony Online Entertainment, a lot of the people 
that were at the company I was at now had come from there. And then they were kind of being reacquired or bought back and kind of brought back into the Sony family. So at the time, well, when I got hired, they'd already figured out who they were going to lay off and who they were going to bring back over. They'd built up all these lists long before I actually got my job offer. I don't know how long before, but sometime before, I guess, I got my job offer. So I got laid off. It's sh long story short, about three, maybe it was four weeks in, I got laid off and wasn't sure what was going to happen. I Right at the layoff time, though, they did tell me, hey, because you've been doing a lot of tools in this QA department and you've been sharing what you've been doing and kind of making some of these things available for the design team, that the design team is really excited and really likes this stuff and they'd like to keep you on and the QA team likes what you're doing. So we want to bring you back on, um, you know, as soon as we kind of get things settled down. Now, I thought that meant like, hey, you know, go home and on Monday or Tuesday, this was on a Friday, Monday, Tuesday, you know, we'll call you and we'll let you know like what's going to happen or maybe sometime next week. It actually ended up being about three weeks before I even got a call and talked to them. And when I did hear back from them, I actually had to go through the interview process again. Now, this interview process was a bit more intense than the first one because it was going to be at a new company that was technically, well, I, I guess a bit more formal with their processes. I needed to go through some phone interviews and then actually fly back down in person for a formal um, in-person interview. Just, uh, well, it was just felt a little bit weird because I'd already been there and kind of met these people and knew them at least a little bit. But I felt a lot more comfortable with it and everything, of course, went great and I got the new offer. Now the new job offer, because it was at a new company and every time you get a new job offer or a new job, you end up getting some raise and they want to beat the last department or the last place. The new offer came in at, well, I guess when let me start with uh, a little bit on salary negotiation and how bad I was at it at the time. Because I, re I really didn't know anything about negotiating a salary or the fact that like when you're getting a job offer or they're asking your salary requirements, they're kind of interested. So you don't have a ton of leverage, but you have a, at least a little bit enough that you should you know make some sort of an ask for something. So the, the way that the uh, job salary negotiation on this one went, and it's it's vague in my memory. It's been a while. But I, I remember we were talking about, well, no, what would you, I think the question was, what would you like to make? Oh, what would be a good amount? And I'd already kind of figured out and I'd realized after going down there for just a couple of weeks and making 32000 that I wanted to make you know more than that if I could, because that was going to be extremely difficult to live on given the costs of the, just the cost of living and looking at the price of rent there. Hey, that was going to make it so that a, a rent regular rent was going to be more than half of my paycheck at 32000 considering again, kids, wife can't just share a room with a single person. If I could just share a room with a single person and just a single room, it'd be fine. But with, with all of the costs that I had, I, I definitely wanted to go up more. So I actually did a little bit of searching online to figure out what the average salary for the position that I was going to take was in San Diego or in that just San Diego County area. And I think it came back with a number of 55 to 75, or maybe it was 50 to 75. And I told them the number and they had initially come in, I think at 50 and then say, hey, you know what? We're coming back at 55. And I was just ecstatic. I mean, I was thrilled. I was like, this is going to be great. I'm going to be able to pay a little bit less than half of my check for rent and still have enough money to meet my costs and really break into the game industry. I was going to be able to survive, not not do amazing again in the area. Some areas I could do great off of 55, but in Carlsbad, California, it was pretty freaking pricey. So I would be able to at least you know get by. Everything would be okay, and I would be in the game industry. So I jumped on that opportunity. We shortly after moved down. My wife and two kids got an apartment and just started, uh, I guess, chugging along. So let's talk about what the costs were like because I keep mentioning that you know these numbers are good in some areas but in southern california and stuff they might be a little bit rough and you know there are of course other areas where it's even more expensive and i'm sure you know whether or not your area is more or less expensive than than some of these coastal areas so 
what what were the costs? Well, I'd mentioned like rent being you know fifty percent or more of the check at, at thirty two thousand. That's definitely the case. I think at thirty two thousand, the take home pay is a little under three thousand after taxes and um, medical insurance and all that stuff. I'm not sure the exact amount, but I would guess high two thousands. And rent at our first apartment in in the area when we moved down here was nineteen hundred and fifty dollars as for a two bedroom apartment um that was within kind of within walking distance of work it was definitely it needed to be within driving distance in a very short distance or at least within a distance that if I had to walk to work, I could because we had a single car, we had two kids, one starting school, and my wife was pregnant so you know, she could drop me off at work and pick me up. But if this was going to be a long drive or anything else went wrong, like I needed to be able to walk home or get home or have somebody else quickly keep, just give me a ride home because it was, it was such a short drive. So that's just the cost of rent. Everything else was more expensive too. We moved from Washington State, which is in the northwest side of the United States. It's not a cheap area in the entirety of the United States, but relative to where we moved to it's much much cheaper like i think the area that we were at was a little bit below the average for the united states and the area we moved to was like 30 or 40 percent above the average for the just the cost of living and the cost of general things now, some of the other things that cost a lot more like gas gas was uh, like like a dollar 50 more i remember when gas prices spiked and it was like 80 or 90 dollars to fill up the car and i, I couldn't afford to fill up my car i would Get, out, get as much gas as I could. And they're like, all right, I can't put any more gas in. We got to not drive anywhere because this stuff is too expensive. And I mean, just about everything is more expensive down here in California. And I also really quickly want to talk about some of the benefits though, because the pay, while it wasn't amazing, wasn't too terrible. And the benefits were actually pretty good. So benefits at tech companies tend to include things like drinks and snacks. And of course we had all of that. So the drinks and Occasionally, there was some snacks in there. They didn't have like a full-on snack bar like a lot of the places do now, but they had you know, unlimited drinks and some stuff, and some food would be occasionally catered. They also have relatively good health plans where they cover almost all of it. I think I was paying maybe $100 a month for a family of five at the time to have health care through them. is really good health care with low costs. I definitely liked that. And we also had a lot of vacation time, so we get a good number of days off throughout the year. There were just kind of set days that we got off. We got, I don't remember exactly the number of PTO days, but it was always more than everybody else that I asked at every other non-game company, at least all of my friends that I asked. And we also had like a two week period during Christmas vacation where everybody was just off. It was just like extra time where everyone was off. On top of that, we got some bonuses that increased the pay. So if we released an expansion pack, well, every time you released an expansion pack, you would get a bonus of, I think, I don't know if it was the same for everybody, but while I was there, it was 10% that people were getting, or at least that I saw people getting. They'd get 10% of whatever their salary was. So if I was at 55K, then I'd get a $5,500 bonus check. In fact, I think that was, I think my first bonus check came when I was, I had already gotten a raise to 60, and then it was a $6,000 check. But then one important thing to note on bonus checks is that at least in the United States, they're taxed quite a bit higher than your personal income or your regular income. So the amount that I got from it was about 50% of that. And I remember I actually used that money to buy my first 30-inch Dell monitor, which is um, sitting somewhere around here. I don't know, either in a closet or on a kid's desk now. This is amazing. I loved it. Brand new 30-inch monitor that I got with my my bonus check and I was so excited about it. Um, so <laughs> I can't get rid of it because it just reminds me of my first bonus. Anyway, this was just, I guess, something I've been wanting to share for a while and just kind of get out there. I know that these numbers vary a lot just based on where you're at. If you're in the UK, it seems to vary dramatically even from country to country. And even in the US, it varies quite a bit on what the pay is. So I'd make sure that, you know, when you're looking at a job, just make sure that you can pay the, the basics, that you can meet everything that you need, and that there's room for growth and potential. I didn't take that QA job thinking, hey, this is the best job ever. I'm going to be rich and love it. I took that QA job thinking, hey, 
this is an entry into the industry that I want to work in. It's a game that I'm really interested in. And I think that I'll have a lot of fun working here and I can work my butt off and just kind of grow, get better and start to do the things that I want to do. I recommend that if there's something out there that you want to do, it doesn't have to be game development, whatever it is, like just dive in if, if you can, if you can make it work and you can make it financially viable, dive in, do it and um, see if you can turn it into something awesome. It's, it's definitely something I would recommend. And don't forget, you can get all of my courses right now for the price of just one. Check out the Full Path Bundle by simply clicking the link in the description and get a huge discount. All right, that's all I got to say about that. So thanks again for watching. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, share. And again, if you have questions, comments, anything, just drop them down below. I'll try to reply or just do a follow-up video on it and you know, answer whatever you guys have. All right, thanks again and goodbye.